One thing I know is that ever since I was a kid, I um, felt the love for the music. I mean, I always felt it and emotionally involved in it. I, when I heard music that I really connected with, it would stir me emotionally. But we were always taught in my family that music was to be learned so that we become better human beings and use it as a friend for the rest of our lives. Um, but not as a profession to make money with or living with. It wasn't until I was, I would say, 21 or 22, after I graduated from college, that I r became strong enough, I think, with myself and I asserted myself and realized that I could live life the way I want to. I knew within three months that music was going to be it. Did you know you were going to be a success, Yanni? I mean, was that, was that something that when you, when you finally decided, I'm going to be a musician, I'm going to compose? Yeah. I, I mean, I, you don't embark on a trip this long, and it's, it's a hard one. And it's a very uncertain one, uh, without knowing. And I learned that very early on because I was an athlete. And I remember from the coaches that I have had, they said, right before the race, if you don't know you're going to be number one, you won't. <laughs> don't worry, it won't happen. Yanni was born and raised in Kalamata, Greece. But after high school, encouraged by his family to come to the United States, where his dad believed he would have a better future, he enrolled at the University of Minnesota and graduated with a psychology degree in 1976. It was during these early years in college that Yanni met and began working with several local musicians and for the first time started to think about music as a profession. Eventually, he joined a popular local rock and roll band called Chameleon. In fact, I think it's probably one of his dark little secrets that the rest of the country doesn't know about or are not aware of, you know. Dugan McNeil co-wrote songs and played with Yanni in Chameleon. He remains one of Yanni's closest friends. I called him up. I thought he was an Indian. <laughs> I, 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 Why is that? I, I don't know. I, I had never heard a Greek accent before. And uh, I called him up and talked to him. And, and I told the band, I said, yeah, I just talked to this, this keyboard player. And I think, he's in, I think he's like an East Indian or something. So uh, they were open-minded. And I was open-minded. And he, <laughs> he came over and he was, he was this Greek guy. And... Uh, we hit it off just like, and it was a real spiritual kind of thing. The band was together for about five years, and I think the band was one of the first ones around here to be doing a total original kind of a project. People weren't used to seeing a real theatrical presentation. The show was bombs and rockets, and I remember Yanni saying, um, here's how the, you get just wired and he'd say here's how the show starts we come out and four bombs go off and the lights come on and then it goes straight up from there he was very visual as well as being musically creative he knew exactly what his angles were he knew exactly where the fog had to go the light and he was real specific about what what should be done when chameleon broke oh, up yanni like signed a deal with private music so Albums, like tours, Sanya. and his personal career Sanya began to take off. And Yanni's success meant success for his friends. Joe Stafford, a photographer for Chameleon, went on to shoot album covers for Yanni's first two releases. And Tom Paskey, who managed Chameleon, now heads Yanni's business affairs. I think he continues with us sometimes out of a loyalty, but there's a trust thing there, too. He doesn't trust very easily, but then uh, when he does, it's just kind of forever. I mean, he's in L.A. now, and in L.A., people tend to tell you things that you want to hear. I guess from Minneapolis, knowing him from 10 years ago, we don't bother to do that. Minneapolis is just a great city, but it's fairly safe compared to Los Angeles or New York. So I felt, don't ask me why, <laughs> I needed more punishment. <laughs> I needed the, the, the exposure to, to this sort of atmosphere. At Yanni's home in Hollywood, the spare bedroom has been converted into a studio. This is where he slips away to record his albums. He is a self-taught musician 
with a natural gift of perfect pitch. So, so does it mean, Yanni, that any I could play any note and you would know exactly what it was? Yeah. yeah. Without looking. All right, so, so okay, turn around. Without looking. So turn around. All right. Without looking. You ready? Yes. That's a G. It's an E flat. It's a D and an E together. That's very <laughs> That one was good. Where do your songs come from, Yanni? I mean, do you hear, um, like they say, writers hear voices and characters speaking? I mean, uh, do you have this commotion going on in your head? Yeah, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> I hear notes. I hear everything. The interesting thing is that when you are creative, when your sp the spark comes to where you really know. You cannot observe yourself doing it. The minute you observe yourself, if you say, ah, it's happening, it's gone. Music to me is not um, an exercise. It's not a matter of being clever with how you position certain notes. It's, it's a way of talking. You tell a story. I happen to believe that music is extremely accurate at conveying and describing very uh, subtle emotions. So it is a, it's a great level of communicating. Jill is much more expressive with the music than I've ever seen her. This is One of the people drawn into Yanni's fold by his music is figure skater Jill Trinery. In 1990, she won the world championship skating to one of his songs. Now he is working on an original score for her performance at the 1992 Olympics. Music is so important for our sport. It's just unbelievable. You can go out there and do six triples, but it doesn't matter if you're just going out there and not you know emoting expressing yourself to the music at all and with music like Yanni's I just I feel for me that it clicks and it's also even more special because he's my friend and and we're doing this together and it's there's a little a special place in my heart for him and when I'm out there that will be with me it's very exciting I'm gonna I I gotten videotapes of your routine and I'm sort of studying it and I'm gonna score it like a picture. The beauty of doing it this way I think is that she the timing of the music will be to facilitating with her routine. I, I don't think it's ever been done before. Communicating. Yeah. yeah. Well since you brought it up, Yami, I mean somebody you communicated to mm -hmm. your girlfriend, Linda Evans. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? I connected with her on a, on a really great human level that I never have done that with another woman in my life before. His music is exceptional to me. Uh, so exceptional that uh, for the first time in my life I made a phone call to somebody to say I love what you do. So you really didn't know what he looked like or no. how old he was or any no. of the details? <laughs> if I had seen him I know I wouldn't have called him. <laughs> <laughs> is that true, Linda? Oh yeah, no, because then I would have said you see, the first time I looked at him, I fell in love with him. So, I mean, then what would I do? Call him on the phone? I would die. It would be terrible. <laughs> Since Dynasty went off the air, Linda has time to follow Yanni on tour. She was with him earlier this month at his concerts in Norfolk, Virginia, and the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. Uh, Yanni, he's a pretty demanding guy. Gotta be ready. Okay, you guys ready to go up real soon here? <laughs> There's ten of us on stage. Somewhere between my first band and the symphony orchestra concerts. <laughs> this group will have the capability of creating such a variety of sounds from song to song that normal bands can't do. I mean, one time we could sound like a symphony orchestra, the next time we could sound like a rock and roll band. <laughs> I suppose they put me in new age category because they don't know what else to do with me. I'm this instrumental artist that basically does a lot of different types of sound and attitude about music. I think the mystery of it really is part of the magic of it because he feels it so intensely because it's so real for him and because he's not afraid of feelings or emotions. And then he's able then to create them. No, I you don't scream care. that right <laughs> No, you everybody scream? else was screaming. You were screaming right from oh, the get-go. Yeah. Who was screaming during the reflection, Sebastian? There was somebody who was yelling. We're not happy together or together because she understands my music. I think maybe that was an introduction. 
it, it's sort of a silly analogy here, but I feel like a bird, you know, birds do their songs to attract their mates. I think that people are fascinated by your romance. Definitely has helped me in my career. Absolutely. It has uh, attracted the public's attention to me. In the final analysis, the music and what I do and what I'm all about has to stand on its own. It will never and I will never succeed just because Linda and I are romantically involved. Washington. It's absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous. We'll see what it's going to sound like. <laughs> I need more experiences in life. And that's how I intend to keep it fresh. That's how I intend to keep my audience interested in me. Linda many times has said that success is a great, the greatest seductress. Unless you really know who you are, so when people praise you, you still know who you are, and when they put you down, you still know who you are. And if you can do that, hopefully you'll survive the experience. <laughs>